Hi, everyone. I want to welcome you again to Mathematics for the Impatient. I've got Stan Cladco, our CTO and co-founder of Scale, and I'm Marcos, who head up comms here. Stan, I want to jump right into it. Um, London Fork is on everyone's lips. It's super important. It's something that we're all thinking about, all talking about. Um, can you tell me a little bit about London Fork, otherwise known as EIP 1559, and, and the problems that it solves? Yeah, it's really, really hot. You know, it's all over Twitter. And people are talking about during crypto parties, it's all about AAP 50, 1559. And today we're just going to discuss a little bit mathematics of the thing. So next time you're at a party, you can impress your friends with the knowledge of how the thing actually works. So AIP 1559, otherwise known as London Fork, is a pretty important change in the way Ethereum operates. And this is something that people have been designing for a long time, for over two, uh, two years, and now it's actually running. So let me first explain what was the need for it, why actually people needed to have this 1559. In the past, uh, Ethereum gas fees were something which was really, really hard to predict. And to give you an analogy, I'm just going to have an analogy with a bus. Let's say you have a bus and the bus, this bus comes to the bus station, say every five minutes, and people are waiting at the bus station and they want to get into the bus. So the bus is Ethereum block and people are transactions. And let's imagine that there are many, many transactions, many, many people that want to get into the bus. So the question is, how do you select which people get into the bus and which, which people have to wait. The way it was done in the past for Ethereum was that imagine every person saying how much money this particular person wants to pay to get into the bus. Let's say you, Marcus, say, I want to pay $1. And I, I, I'm saying, I want to pay $2. And someone else is saying, this person wants to pay $3. So each person says how much money this person is willing to pay. And then the driver, which will naturally select people who will pay the most. But the problem will be that people will get into the bus and some people will pay $1, some people will pay $2, and some people will pay $3. That was the way it was done in, in Ethereum. And this is something which is called first price auction. It's a very simple auction, and it actually allows you to select really simply who gets into the bus and who has to wait until the next bus. But the problem is that each person in the bus will, like, will pay a different amount of money. And this is really unfair. That's one of the problems. Now, another problem is actually much more subtle, and it's related to something we discussed last time, the front running or minor extractable value. Imagine one person just saying, I will pay just one cent to get into this bus. And suddenly you see the driver selecting this person and lending this person to get into the bus. The question is, why would some say, someone that just gets to pay one cent get into the bus? And it turns out that the reason is front running because the bus operator is also doing front running on this transaction the bus operator will actually accept very low price because the rest of the money will be made from front running this transaction. So this gas pricing was unfair and many people complained about this. And also many DApps were actually unpredictable because no one knew what is the actual price, how much you need to pay to get to the, the, the bus. So people actually came up with a different scheme. And the first person to get to come up with this scheme was Vitalik Buterin. And the idea is that the price is constant. So everyone that gets into the price pays the same, to the bus pays the same price, let's say $1. But then if there are too many people, the next bus will charge $1.10. And the next one will charge $1.20. So the price keeps on increasing when there are many people until there's a market equilibrium. Essentially, some people decide to walk or take a bicycle instead of actually using the bus. And then some 
point, there's an equilibrium between demand and uh, and the need to uh, and the price, and that's how the price is determined. So for every again for every particular bus, the price is the same for everyone. But there is if there's lots of demand, the price is slowly increasing, and there is low demand, the price is decreasing. So there is where the slowly varying price that finally finds market equilibrium. And that's the, actually the idea of EIP 1559. Instead of having this auction, having this slowly varying price that changes with demand for, for, the, for the particular transactions. So that's really the idea of EIP 1559. And uh, the important thing is how to implement this, how you first you change the price. That's where there is a little bit of a freedom you can change the price slowly. You can change the price fast. And what we see on the Ethereum network now, after this London fork has been introduced, that probably the price is changing a little bit too fast. So we've seen a bit of variation in the price, too much variation from block to block. The price is actually varying probably a little bit too much. So it may be that in the future, there will be a need to, to change, to tweak this EIP 1559 a little bit to make the price varying more slowly. But in general, I think it's, it has improved things a, a lot in the sense that the price has become much more predictable. And in addition to this uh, uh, changing price, there's a little bit of a tip. So, if you want to get into the into the bus, you can also tip the driver. This is if you really want your transaction to be really in, inside the, the block. So in, in addition to the slowly varying price, there's a tip to, that you can pay on top. And this is for transaction that want to actually execute really fast. So that's pretty much the idea of AIP 1559. And as I said, uh, uh, London Fork has been operating already for several days. And overall, I must say that it was really, really a great thing. The price is, has become much more predictable. And at scale, we see that we've been doing some test transactions and things are overall doing pretty well. I must also say that the similar problem exists in on scale network. And scale has been running EIP 1559 already for about a year. So our network was from the beginning, AAP 1559 compatible, and we had this slow changing price idea that we uh, actually uh, exported essentially from Vitalik's idea, and we are running on our network. That's very cool. Um, I guess I, I want to go a little bit deeper. Um, I think one of the things that probably a lot of people are asking about and they want to understand better is fee burning. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Ethereum disappears. What does that mean? So maybe if you could talk a little bit more about fee burning, how it will affect miners and token holders, and and you know what 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 the kind of general concept and idea is. Mm -hmm. That's actually the second hugely discussed topic. So the first one is the slowly varying gas price that I just described, and this one is just fantastic. It improves the stability and predictability of Ethereum network, and the second big piece is this fee burning. So. Fee burning comes from, from the idea that uh, when the price increases, the price increase is not done in order to benefit miners. The price increase is a mechanism that is used to select who, who gets into the bus, right? Who gets into the block, which trans transaction gets into the block. So miners are already paid for every block, for every Ethereum block, there's a basic fee, a mining fee that, that miners get. In addition to this basic fee, miners were getting this fee coming from this passengers auctioning and actually paying transaction fees. So in the past, every miner was getting this basic fixed mining fee for every block. And then also when the network was getting congested and the transaction fees were getting high, Miners were also getting this other part, the fees that the passengers were paying. So there were these two pieces. And because Ethereum network was getting congested so much, in some cases, 
people were paying hundred dollars per transaction, people were paying a thousand dollars per transaction. There was this huge amount of fees that was actually paid to miners. And the idea that Vitalik introduced was that instead of paying this fee to the miners, you could actually burn this. So you could actually take these fees, the, the actual fees that passengers of the bus pay, and they actually burn this money, literally take a lighter and burn this cash. And this idea actually looks pretty counterintuitive how you can burn money. But if you think about this, there is actually a fixed supply of Ethereum. So when you burn a particular coin, when you burn a particular Ethereum coin, there's less Ethereum. So the value of the entire Ethereum network is actually divided by the total number of coins in circulation. So when you burn Ethereum, the value of the remaining Ethereum gets high, higher, right? So essentially, when you, if you burn US dollars, the, way, the value of remaining US dollars get, gets higher. And the same way, if you burn Ethereum, the value of remaining Ethereum gets higher. So burning Ethereum actually makes inflation less and increases the value of Ethereum for, for, for investors or for coin holders. So essentially, this idea of fee burning comes from the point that if you burn the coin, you actually make things better for people who hold this coin. And it actually improves the potential of Ethereum as an investment. And many people saying that this actually helps in a competition, as you know, Ethereum as a store of value competes essentially with Bitcoin. So the fact that Ethereum is actually gonna burn some of the Ethereum coins is gonna help Ethereum value. And it also gonna a little bit make a mining, mining a little less profitable. So there is an opposition coming from the miners. So when the second part of, of this London fork was introduced, naturally there was an opposition of miners and some kind of a discussion between miners and token holders. But because Ethereum is going to change from proof of work to proof of stake anyway in the future, the Ethereum community as a whole decide, decided that this fee burning was making sense. So improving value, increasing value for the token holders was making sense. And as a part of actually switching from proof of work to proof of stake, it actually even makes much more sense because with proof of stake, there's no more mining. Everything is going to be done through staking and staking is done by token holders. So the community decided that fee burning was making more sense and this was introduced. And what we see now, definitely for the last like couple of months, the value of Ethereum token was increasing. And this particular feature, uh, uh, my burning of the fees contributed, contributed to actually increasing the, the value of the Ethereum token. So this second part fee burning Actually, the idea and the purpose of it is to decrease inflation. And by decreasing inflation, you potentially increase the value for the token holders. So that's also like the, the second really important part of the London fork. And I think so far it's, it's also working pretty well. In a sense, if you look at the value of Ethereum for, for the last couple of months, it's been doing pretty well. And definitely token holders are happy about this. Definitely miners maybe not so happy, but miners already are making significant amount of money from actually basic fees that every, every Ethereum block is actually paying uh, the base fee to the miners. So that's the second part of, of the London fork. And then basically we have two things. We have uh, the new algorithm for gas pricing, which is much more fair and everyone is paying the same to get into the bus. Everyone is paying the same, the same price. And then we have this fee burning. And that, these are two important things about London Fork. Very cool. I think that is a, a pretty good wrap up. So we'll, we'll take it from there and, and wait until next week when we talk about uh, the next hot topic that's going on. Thanks a lot, Stan. Okay, thank you, Marcus.